Happy Thursday, everybody. Today is May 13th. Don't forget when you're working on your journal, do your best to write in cursive. Let's go ahead and read today's story called Speak Up. Stop judging by the way things look. Be fair and judge by what is really right. I said this at the temple in Jerusalem to teach that judging can be good or bad. I was talking to people who had judged me only by the words of the Old Testament law, ignoring the heart and spirit of the law. Once when I healed a man's hand on the Sabbath, the Jewish day of worship, the Pharisees started making plans to kill me. They said I was wrong because the law ruled that no one should work on the Sabbath. The, the Sabbath is Sunday, if you don't know what day that is. Sunday is supposed to be um, the, a day of rest and worship. But where was their kindness and concern for others? That kind of judging is wrong, but not all judging is wrong. Do decide between right and wrong, good and evil, and use my words in the Bible to do it. But don't decide what other people are worth based on how they look or how smart they are or how popular they are. Today, you often hear the word tolerance. It means you are supposed to accept what people do, even if I've said it's wrong. This causes many of my followers to stay quiet when they see things that aren't right but I want you to be brave and speak up, to tell the truth, but do it in love with words that are kind and gentle, to prepare yourself, search your heart to make sure you have the right attitude. Search the scriptures too, so you can be very sure about what I say in the Bible. Then ask my spirit to work through your words, just as he loves others, through your actions. So the story teaches us that uh, to speak up and tell the truth, even if you see something that is not right, but to use gentle and kind words when doing that. All right, friends, let's open up our math. Yesterday we did quarters. Today we're going to do something called equal amounts. So that would be two different ways to make the same amount of money, but maybe using different combinations of coins or different coins. Let's look at the example with Gregory and Damien. Gregory and Damien have the coins shown. Gregory is on the left and Damien is on the right. Do the boys have equal amounts of money? Equal amounts have the same value. Find the amount of money for each boy. Arrange the coins in order from greatest value to least value. Count on to find the total amount in each group. So Gregory's coins are quarter, quarter, dime, dime, penny. He has 71 cents. Gregory has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dimes and one penny giving him 71 cents. So the boys have equal amounts of money. Let's look on the back. Circle yes or no to tell if the groups of coins show equal amounts. So you will need to count how much is this side worth? Now remember, start with quarter, quarters, then go to dimes, and then go to nickels, and then go to pennies. Then figure out this side, 
quarters, nickels, penny. And then if they're both the same amount, then you would circle yes. If they're different amounts, then you would circle no. Number two, show two ways to make each amount. Okay, well, let me do um, number two for you so you can see how to write it. And then you can do number three on your own. Okay, so it's showing us that we can use quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies. I need to figure out how to make 82 cents one way. So maybe I do um, three quarters. That's why I'm putting a three there. Three quarters would be 75 cents. Now I'm going to do One nickel, that's five cents. So 75 and five gives me 80. And two pennies. That's one way. Now I need to come up with a second way. Maybe I want to do, now I know dimes are 10 cents. Maybe I want to do eight dimes. Eight dimes would be 80 cents. And then I could do two pennies. That would give me 82 cents. So for number three, you're looking for two different ways to make 43 cents. Number four, Layla has six dimes and three nickels. Audrey has two quarters. What coin does Audrey need for the girls to have equal amounts? All right, how would you do this? Well, you first need to know how much money Layla has altogether. Six dimes, number dimes are 10, and she has three nickels. Nickels are five. Once you figure out how much Layla has, and it says Audrey has two quarters. How much is two quarters worth? Once you figure out how much two quarters are worth and you know how much money Layla has, then you'll have to figure out what coin does Audrey need in order for both the girls to have the same amount. Does she need a quarter, a dime, a nickel, or a penny? Number five, how can you find out if two groups of coins show equal amounts. Well, you can't just count how many coins and if one person has five coins and the other person has five coins, you can't say that they both have the same amount. So you have to count both groups of money in order to see if they're equal. more practice. Okay, this is just like the one example that I did on the back, but it's now asking you to show three ways to make each amount. Let me do number one for you. Okay, we need 59 cents. We can use quarters, dimes, nickels, pennies. Well, I know two quarters is 50 cents. So if that is 50 cents, I could then do nine pennies to give me 59. This is a, um, oh, that's a really bad two. Let me fix that. That looks like a one. Let me try again. I'm going to do two quarters, nine pennies, 59 cents. Now I need a second way. Um, 
I'm going to do dimes. If dimes are 10 cents, I'm going to do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I'm going to do five dimes. I'm going to do one nickel. So 50 plus five is 55. And then I'm going to do four pennies. 55 and four would give me 59. Now I need one more way. So we have to do three different ways. Maybe I do one quarter. That's 25. One dime. That's 35. Um, I'm going to do nickels. I'm going to do three nickels. Nickels are five. So if I have 35 and I'm doing three nickels, 40, 45, 50, and I'm going to do nine pennies. So there I have three different ways, even though I use nine pennies, I still use different combinations of the other coins. So you can use that in your example. Number two, or I'm sorry, you can use that in your problem. I guess it's not an example. Number two is asking you to show three different ways to make 71 cents. Okay, a little more practice on the back. One and two, three different ways to make each amount. So you're going to get really good at doing that. Number three, four, and five, match the sets of coins with equal amounts. So let me do number three for you. Seven dimes and two nickels. Well, we have to figure out how much is seven dimes and two nickels. I know seven dimes is 70. I'm just gonna put that right here for myself. And how much is two nickels? Two nickels are five, two of them would be 10. So I'm, I have 80 cents. Now on the other side, I need to find what combination gives me 80 cents. All right, so it's it's not gonna have seven dimes and two nickels over here. We have to find a different combination, but that still gives us 80 cents. Let's look at letter B. Three quarters is 75 cents. And one nickel is five. 75 and five is 80 cents. So number three goes to letter B. Number six, Liam has five nickels. Art has three dimes and one nickel. What coin does Liam need to have an equal amount? Okay. Figure out how much money is five nickels. What does Liam have? Then figure out how much money does Art have? And then decide, does he need a penny, a nickel, a dime, or a quarter to have the same amount? Last but not least, number seven, Ava has two quarters and five pennies. Mia has five dimes and three nickels. Which coin should Mia give Ava so they have equal amounts? So figure out how much money does Ava have? How much money does Mia have? And what coin can Mia give to Ava so they both would have the same amount? Should she give her a penny, a nickel, a dime, or a quarter? And it says to explain. So I might say Mia should give Ava a blank. 
because she has a penny too much, a nickel too much, a dime too much, or a quarter too much. That is for my reading class. So let's go back and find religion for today. Here we go. Walking with Jesus. This is page 214. This is a story about Jesus's friend. And I always have trouble pronouncing this name, but I think it's Cleopas. Um, and Jesus. Go ahead and take, um, go, I'm sorry, go ahead and read the story to find out what happens. And then on page 215, the activity after you read, it's going to ask you to put the events in the story in order from one to five. So, if you don't read the story, this part's going to be a little bit tricky. So let me just read the first paragraph for you. Cleopas and his friend were very sad. Jesus had died on a cross three days earlier. Some women had gone to the tomb and now were telling everyone that Jesus was alive. But the two disciples had not seen Jesus with their own eyes. They were confused. They left Jerusalem to walk home. Do we see any of the events that we would start with number one? Maybe not yet. So we have to keep reading. So you're going to look for one, two, three, four, and five. All right, boys and girls, there's one chapter of Charlotte's Web left for you to listen to. And um, it is, I think, the best chapter in the whole book. So I hope that you enjoy it if you have been following and listening. Don't forget, if you need a little chart with cursive letters on the front page of my Adlio, there's one and you can print it out. Or your mom and dad can maybe find one online. But it's a certain style of cursive called Danelian if you're looking for a chart. All right, I hope you do well counting the money today. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone.